Hello, welcome to the Pixelated Perfect Podcast. Um, I'm super excited to have Delphina on our podcast today. Delphi is um, one of the designers at TDP. She's been, you've been at TDP for about three months now, um, right? I think a little bit more, like five more? since April. So really, okay, yes. five Hi, months. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, yeah, so I'm so excited to have Delphi on the call. Delphi, since joining, has been such an amazing addition to the team. And I'm super excited to not only talk about, Delphi, your past and where you came from, but also like all of the cool things that you've been doing at the Design Project. Um, and so, yeah, thank you so much for being here. No, thank you. And it's an honor to be part of the Pixelated Perfect podcast and, of course, being part of TDP. Um, so thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, of course. So I'm excited. So, so let's kind of jump into you telling your story of getting started in design, um, all the way up to kind of where you are today. Sure. So I think that I have to go back to my school years, like high school years. Um, like when I finished high school or like the last years in high school, I knew I wanted this creative path in my career. Like uh, I had this uh, advertisement project in the last year of school, and it was like I want to like I want something like that in my life, in my career path. Um, also, I was like really good at I don't know creative stuff, like I don't know handcraft and that that type of things. So I decided that I wanted that, like a creative path. Um, so uh, I entered a graphic design career here in the University of Buenos Aires, which is like the most traditional graphic design career that you could uh, be on <laughs> here in, in the country. Um, and when I say traditional, also I say like like up updated, like out of date in some sense, because we were doing like these all these manual things. And it was like more focused on uh, traditional things and not like so much on the digital design. Um, so uh, the first years at university were like really intense um, because it was like a lot of uh, a lot of time spent on on classes. Like I would go like the whole day to to a class and also like the. Um, the teachers there were really demanding in a good way because you end up like learning a lot, but it was like really, really demanding. It was like a full time job. But then like uh, the last years of university, um, I decided that I wanted like a real world experience before graduating because I kind of anticipated that if I didn't have that real world experience uh, when I finished, uh, like when I actually graduated, that would be like difficult for me to get a full-time job that I wanted. So uh, I entered, actually I applied for this apprenticeship program in a newspaper here. Uh, it's a national newspaper, uh, one of the biggest ones here in, in the country. Um, and I entered there, I, I applied, I had like a lot of interviews and after two months of, uh, of the job search, I finally entered. Um, and it was awesome. Like I was really excited about it. I had this amazing team of not only designers, but also like I had this mentor that I really look up to. I have also another coworker, like, and she ended up being like my friend, but it, she was the person who I brainstormed, like brainstormed things uh, with like at the same level. Uh, we were like great colleagues. Um, and also there, there was this part of the team that were developers and also journalists, of course, because it was a newspaper. Um, so I will stop there in case you have like any questions because it's been too long now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I think that's interesting that you said, like talking about um, university and how graphic design, there were some aspects of it that were out, out of date versus yes. like maybe some more digital experiences. And, and that was my experience too. And, um, I think that 
I, I guess my question is, is that also kind of why you sought out an internship and real world experiences? Like you knew you wanted to be more in the digital space and maybe you weren't getting that. Um, honestly, at that time, I didn't think of that. I think that, uh, yeah, that idea came up after the apprenticeship, actually. Uh, like, I, I oh, think I, interesting. yeah, I learned more about, I think actually like the apprenticeship program was my first approach to UX design. And I, like, I didn't even realize that at that time because I was doing like, um, data visualization with these like, uh, interactive infographics um, and it I nowadays I think like it it has to do a lot with UX design like I was designing experiences for people but I didn't even know it at that, that at that time like I thought I was just like designing infographics or data you know um, and it was more a lot like it was more than that and right. I see it now <laughs> Right. I mean, yeah, like, I think data visualization is a huge part of like UI UX design. But walk, tell us more about the internship and like what you did with data visualization, because I know I saw some examples of your some of the work you did um, when when you interviewed at TDP. But what did that look like for you? What was like your day to day? What what kind of projects did you get to work on? It was really exciting and it was really challenging because I was this like student, uh, I would say like junior designer, um, and I was being part of these big projects that uh, had a lot of visibility because there was there were like posted in this newspaper. Um, so my day, a typical day there, it would be like I I got together with the team maybe like some news came up, maybe it would be, it could be a breaking news, but also it could be some project that is like more of a long-term uh, project. And I don't know, maybe a special news, a special article that they wanted like a special infographics uh, for. And I gather not only with my, like my mentor that was my boss, but also like with journalists from that specific area. For instance, I don't know, it could be politics. So it was like really, really interesting because um, like I, I think I was doing this, the thing that I liked that was designing, but also like it had a lot of impact on, on people. Like, and then I don't know, my friends would tell me, hey, I saw this in the newspaper and I saw your name on it. So it had like a lot of visibility. So it was really awesome at the time. Yeah, that's, I mean, that. I'm sure it felt so good to like yes. see your work and knowing that it's not like you were just like, I think I don't want to phrase it wrong. I think like graphic design, there's kind of like, it's like making things pretty in some ways. Um, and I think like some of the work that you were doing in design, at, it was making an impact on how people could gather that information or understand these, this breaking news. And it was like really impactful for the whole country. Um, more yeah. than just like, oh, making something look good. It was like, there was so much more to it. Yes. And I have to say that my mentor at that time, like really pushed me in understanding that because maybe I got that from, from him and not from, not so much from university, like from, from the graphic design career that of course it gave me a lot of things and a lot, a lot of knowledge that nowadays I, I notice that I use, like for instance, basic things like spacing or how can I make uh, something like more more balanced or I don't know th those basic stuff I know it because of the graphic design career but right. of, like having that mentor that really pushed me in thinking more uh, I think it was like super super motivating for me at that time yeah well let's talk more about mentorship so yeah, you had this mentor, this person you could lean on. And I think also, not just mentorship, but also you got to work with so many different people. Um, like you said, like journalists, developers, like so many other people outside of like traditional design. So what would be your advice for maybe a junior designer starting um, about working with other people? I would say like be open to every comment or every feedback that everyone on the team has 
on your work because that is what is going to help you grow uh, and take your career like to the next level. Like I think feedback is super important and if you are not getting it, like you should ask for it. Um, and also something that that uh, really happened to me is um, maybe at that time at that time in my career, no, uh, like a little bit more in my career. Um, there was a time that I wasn't getting the, the opportunities I wanted. So it, there came a time that I asked for, like, I want to be part of the UX area. Like, I want to be part of that. And they gave me that opportunity. But the thing is, like, the opportunities won't come alone. Like, you, you have to go for them. So that is one of my, <laughs> my advice for, for a junior designer. I love that so much, both of your points. Like, mm -hmm. always ask for feedback and ask for what you want. Um, yes. Totally. And, you know, I know since you've joined TDP is, like, you've been involved in so many things and it was, like, you coming and saying, hey, I'm interested in this. And that's, like, a trait of yours that I think is amazing and I value and I, I definitely – highly suggest everyone if like they're interested in something don't wait for it to come to you like get out there and, yeah. and ask for it for sure i think that's great and yeah you live by that i can can definitely vouch yes. for you you doing that <laughs> yes and something that is like is happening me like currently is that maybe i am at this mid-level in my career where i Maybe you don't have like as a junior the visibility of what do you want, so you don't know what to ask for. But maybe you don't have to think like so ahead of time. Maybe it's like small steps that would take you to tomorrow to where you want. You know, it's it's not about making a huge step at once, but it's like making small steps uh, towards what you want. Uh, I, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I think it does make sense. I think it's like, it's like, don't sit there and think about all the things you could do or don't think about, oh, maybe this isn't the best decision. Like, just do it if it makes sense for you in the moment. Like, there's nothing, like, there's nothing wrong. Like, you're either going to learn something good or bad. Like, you're either going to do well or you're going to fail. And you, no matter what, you're going to learn something. So you should yeah. always just, like, put yourself out there. Yes. Yes, totally. Yes. I think that's great advice because I think a lot of people get in their head and they're like, oh, what if this isn't the right track or what if this doesn't make sense for the long term? And it's like, you don't have to know what's going to happen in the future. Yes. The future is always the future. <laughs> it's always the unknown. Yes, yes. And I don't know, maybe now, like today, you think you want one thing and maybe tomorrow you change your mind. And that's also, that's also part of. Of yeah, that. <laughs> so by having these experiences and putting yourself out there, that will help you understand like yes. what you want and what you don't want. Exactly. So, I, I yes, I love that. I think that's very very true. Um, well, yeah. So that was great. <laughs> I love talking <laughs> about your internship. Um, I think that's a really really interesting space to be in, kind of infographics um, and and all of that. So let's kind of go from there. So what happened next? Where did you go after your internship? Okay, so then um, the like, I was in, in, in this newspaper like around two years. So the apprenticeship like took a little, like I, I was part of this three, six months contract and then they extended me a little bit more. But it came a time that I decided that I wanted like another experience because I was like, I was young and I wanted like to try and test another thing. So an opportunity came up um, and someone in like from human resources like uh, chatted me through LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn um, and it was from this uh, consulting, huge consulting company, uh, like a huge corporation um, that had international uh, customers and uh, well, I had this interview with them and uh, I finally got in. And the, um, the job role was um, multimedia designer. So by multimedia, it was like, you, you will do like a little bit of everything. <laughs> uh, so I was doing like 
branding, uh, animated videos, uh, landings, uh, everything, <laughs> honestly. Um, but it, like, it was really customer oriented. So now that I am like going through my story, like my job story, I'm noticing that from every experience, I like I learned something. Maybe like this one, it, it wasn't so design focused, but it was like a lot of customer facing and um, customer oriented, to be honest. Um, so there, because it, it was like in a consulting environment, it was all about the client being happy. <laughs> so if they wanted an animated video, I would do it. Like I didn't know how, but I would do it. Um, so yes, uh, I, I worked like there in like with a communication specialist, but also um, with a project manager and me as a designer. And we will do these communication campaigns for different customers that were uh, abroad. Um, so that also was my first experience being from Argentina, like to work with people like from another place. So that was a good uh, experience for me to have. Yeah. Um, questions about going from working um, at your internship where it was like a, an internal company and you talked a little bit about customer oriented versus going into that agency. Like what was the biggest challenge you faced and what was the biggest difference between working styles? Um, like I would say both are like, both both of them are very bureaucratic and corporate <laughs> so it, there wasn't so much of a difference but definitely like in my first experience in the in the newspaper processes were were not so much um installed like even though it was this huge newspaper and really recognized and everything it was like super um super weird like they didn't have any processes you, like you would uh, chat with your teammates like uh, through whatsapp <laughs> i don't know it was like super really yeah really it was like super informal even though it was in this big newspaper and right. here like in the consulting agency it was like super like i think there also it gave me the skill of knowing how to work professionally <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I also learned that <laughs> now that I, you mention it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a huge skill to have. And I yeah. think like the only way to really learn that skill is to, is to get into working at a company. Like, I don't think you could learn that through school or anything like that. I think like just, it's like those soft skills, like how to communicate with people, how to like follow yes. processes and timelines and and all of that is like very much that professional side of it yes i i think like uh, luckily like at that time i i wasn't so happy with that experience because it wasn't so designed focused as it was the newspaper for instance so i wanted something like more design focused but nowadays that i see it like with with other eyes, uh, I would say that it helped me a lot in, in professional professionalizing, you could, could say, uh, being, being more, more professional, professional. <laughs> yeah, uh, in being more professional and developing these soft skills that you mentioned. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's something that you bring to the team is like, you have processes, you help us build processes, uh, but you also have this like, customer facing um like way about how you present yourself and how you manage things and i think that that's also what makes a good designer is like you can't just be design oriented as you also especially i mean it, i think it depends on where you work but especially in something like an agency it's so important to have those customer skills yes 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 and, it, and it's just something that i learned it's not something that i as i said like i, I didn't uh, I didn't came with that. Like it was something that you acquire through time and experience. Yes. Yes. What would you say is the most challenging soft skill to master? Or oh, I would say saying no. <laughs> like 
um, negotiating maybe, uh, or yes, communicating to the customer like maybe the decision they are making it is not the most um, I don't know the most uh, suggested one. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but yes, basically yeah, saying like no to the yeah. That's <laughs> do you agree? <laughs> oh my gosh, that was such a good answer. Yes, like I mean. I think that's always one of the hardest things. And and yeah, like I want to dive into the super. I think that's really interesting. So like now as you've maybe mastered your skills a little bit more, like how do you approach a customer and how do you tell them no? Or how do you, like what would be that reasoning and how would you do that? So like nowadays what I try to do is maybe not saying no like and i think this is something i that i learned from you a lot like it is not saying no but uh, like no but or maybe i we we i know we could do this but maybe later or we could expand the scope or like always finding a way to pitch it in a better way like that no um but yeah, I would say that like, uh, or maybe providing some proposals, maybe like, hey, now I, I cannot do this because I'm focused on this other thing. Like uh, always like showing that you are proactive and that you're still working with them and you're working on on their product. But um, yes, maybe like there is there is not the priority right now. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. And I, I definitely, that's something that I believe. And I think it's like, it's like if you come from a place of wanting to, what's best for the customer and you're telling them no or suggesting something else because you have their best interest and you communicate it that way, which really is why we say no is because the customer is not going to get the best designs because the, they're asking for it too fast or they want to do something that just doesn't make sense for their users. And so we really are using UX principles to say, hey, we suggest something else because that's not what's going to be best for everyone. Yes. You're not going to see those business results that you're looking for if you do it this way. So yes. what if we suggest this way? You said Have it you so much had better. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, you know, you said it great. Have you ever had an experience where, um, I feel like this is like an interview question. Have you ever had an experience where it didn't go well, like saying no? Mm, let me think. Uh, how could it be like, um, it didn't go well? Like maybe the customer- Like didn't like your idea and they were like, no, 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 I wanna go with my original suggestion or something. Yes. I'm thinking of one now, <laughs> and now it came up one. Um, yes, I mean, I, I was like maybe proposing one way, going one way, um, and the customer like really wanted uh, to go this other way, even though like we were making like proposals and we were like showing them in what ways this could be more beneficial, for instance. Um, but uh, what ended up happening was that um, like the customer has the last word, to be honest. So if yeah. they want to like if they want to go one way, of course, we, we can make it. Uh, but yeah, always like uh, providing best principles and, uh, you know, uh, best practices and and that stuff. But yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean it's it doesn't always work out yeah it's I think that's a good example um yeah. but at least it's like you tried and you have like you weren't afraid to speak your mind and say what you wanted which kind of goes back to your original idea of like always push for what you want like yeah. that's the best thing you can do um okay so we're at this point where you're at this consulting company working with pretty large international customers, you, you like in hindsight, the customer experience you got, but you were kind of lacking in design. You wanted more design. So what's next? What happened after that? Yes. Uh, so after that, um, I, I decided that I wanted to like, uh, update it 
update my, my resume, my portfolio with these new experiences and started for job searching. Um, and this other opportunity in, a, in an advertisement agency came up and, and I had these interviews and I entered there. Um, and that was like my first UX project like and there, that was like the time where I said like hey I know that you have this area of UX design I wasn't entering for UX like the UX area but I as I was telling you like I asked for that opportunity I said like hey I know that I am entering with another job title but later I would love to be part of the UX area because that is what, where I see myself in um, so a couple of months passed and I don't know, it was one or two months and a project of a website redesign uh, came up there and they told me, hey Delphi, do you want to be part of it? And I say, of course, yes. Uh, that, that was like the opportunity I was waiting for. And so I, I started working um, for this, also this, it was like a, a customer that they had in this uh, advertisement agency. It was this big customer and I basically I did like the first approach to UX, which was like all the UX process, like uh, architecture information, uh, wireframing, like it was the first time I got to do that uh, in a professional uh, experience. Uh, and also I was working with this uh, lead uh, designer, lead UX designer, and uh, I would say a mid-level product designer and me as a junior. Um, so yeah, I, I was able like to propose ideas, to be part of this team and to learn how to, to face a UX process. Uh, so it was like really motivating and challenging for me at that time. And um, yeah, I think that that was like my experience at, at that agency. And then I got into a new, like after I, I would say a, 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 a year, I got into back to the newspaper where, where I started, uh, but now I was in another area, like in a magazine. And I was like the only designer, like in charge of the launching of their website. So I like, I've been, I've been from, um, this junior or mid-level designer in this UX area in the agency. And then I went like to be in, in charge of the website, uh, of the launching of the website of this magazine. Uh, of course I have like an art director, but she didn't have any knowledge on like uh, web design. Um, so that was like a big challenge for me and it was like pretty awesome to be part of. And nowadays it is live, so I am, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, I was part of that. So that's, that's awesome also. Yeah, um, no, that's super exciting. So yeah, you basically, so question about when you kind of started in UX, kind of moving from um, like, hey, I want this opportunity, getting this opportunity. How did you learn the UX UI process? Like, did you learn that from school or just from educating yourself or was it from them? Actually, the team? it was, I would say it was mostly from the team, but also a lot of like self learning. Like uh, I, I didn't even know what information architecture was when, when they told me that word. Um, but I learned a lot by the practice also, like by experiencing it. Uh, and I th and I think that it was like a really safe place for me to to learn, which was great because I had these other people above me. Like uh, I had this uh, product designer and then the like the lead designer, uh, and I was like making maybe small things more in the production, but learning a lot. Uh, so that is something that I also would say to the junior designers, like you, you don't have to start with big projects. Maybe you are doing the small things, but in the meantime, you're learning like the big things that you need to, to learn. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And like, so how did that go from you learning 
um, under people being a junior designer, working your way up and then going to taking a position as pretty much the sole designer. Like, yeah. how, how did that feel? What was that experience like? Yes. Um, it definitely feel, felt at that time, like, um, I think you mentioned it in your episode, in your podcast, but the imposter syndrome, like definitely, uh, and maybe I was a little bit imposter <laughs> because uh, maybe I did uh, need it, uh, like someone uh, maybe that I could work with. And um, of course I had, as I t was telling you, this art director that I really looked up to her, but she, she didn't have a lot of experience in digital design. So I was the one that I, the, that I knew how. Uh, so yeah, definitely there at that time, it was a lot of uh, self-learning and, and because I, I didn't have anyone. Uh, and also like asking colleagues outside of, of, my, like, of, of my work. Um, but yes, it, it was pretty challenging. But it ends yeah. up in, well. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I was going to say, so like it was challenging and then you're awarded with this project that you worked on that turned out amazing and it's out in the real world. And yes. how, how does that feel? Like all of maybe the pressure and the learning and all of that and to get to that final end result. Yes, it, it is really rewarding. And um, yeah, like to see... Also your process, like you being from this junior designer and now you have this big opportunity and you take it and now your product is live. <laughs> so yeah, I think like that is something really rewarding of design in general. Yeah. Seeing, <laughs> yes, like being able to see what, what you've done out there in the world and users using it and that's, yes. And yeah, you've had that quite a few times in your career, like working at um, the newspaper and having your name yeah. under all of these cool infographics and working in big companies at the agency. So yeah, I think that's great. What would you um, what would you say to a designer that is looking to to make the leap of like? maybe they're more junior or mid-level at a company, going from having other team members to maybe being a sole, a sole designer. Like, would you encourage that? Would What level would someone need to be to feel confident in, in taking on that, <laughs> that role on their own? Like, honestly, I think that it's always good to have someone you can look up to. Like, I don't see myself in maybe not now or not in a near future. <laughs> like I don't see myself in anywhere where I kind of look up to someone. Maybe it is not like, maybe it is not design related. Maybe you learn other skills. Like it doesn't have to be design, but at least me, like where I am now, I want to look up to someone because of the design skills, because I, I feel that I still have a lot to work on. So I need that. So I think it, it, it is mostly about um, recognize your pain points or recognize what you are lacking and go to that job experience that can fill that gap in a way. Uh, I like that. Yeah. I also like what you said about like it's not doesn't necessarily have to be design. Like maybe yeah. you do, do take on a position that is you're the sole designer, but you're learning skills from other people on the team that will help you in your future. And so, yeah, I exactly I like, well. or maybe you are at this senior, super senior level in your career and you, you need like to learn other things or you want to learn other things. And yeah. 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 I think that's great advice. I think it's great advice for people kind of making the jump. And like, I will say one thing about <laughs> the design project here to stick that in is something that was really important to me when, like starting the design project is I wanted designers to have other designers to get feedback from because I think that's really important. I think you can get, like we mentioned earlier, you can get feedback from a lot of people, um, which yeah. is always useful. Feedback is always amazing. But I think like 
being able to present your designs and people that might have other ideas or have done something similar in the product design space is kind of always pushing you to grow your design skills. And I think that's like really powerful to have other designers yes. around you. Definitely. I love that about TDB, really. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's like super important. I love it too. I love going into our design reviews and just like seeing what people are doing and thinking about maybe other things they hadn't thought of and getting feedback on my designs and saying, hey, I've been in the weeds here. Like I'm stuck. What do you guys think? Yes. And seeing what everyone else has. I think that's like really a really powerful tool to use. It's like other designers. Yes. Uh, and personally, something that I, I like I always do and recently I did it with you <laughs> like hey if you could review this like I mean it's because I need like thoughts on this and uh, I think that's the best way to yeah to like to move forward and to challenge yourself like uh, asking for for feedback and opinions <laughs> yeah totally yeah. I think that's a great way to also just like expand in an industry that maybe you're not familiar with so like you're working on a project and maybe you haven't worked on this feature before but maybe another designer whether they're on your team or not you can reach out to them and they could give you ideas of things that you haven't yeah. thought of because you don't yeah. know what you don't know and you always should be learning yes and, and something that that happens to me at least is maybe i'm like so focused on on something that i miss the big picture sometimes uh <laughs> And only maybe something from outside can can point out that to me. Like, um, I think that is really powerful. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think that just happened in our design review the other day with one of our designers who was working on something. And you asked the question, like, well, how are they getting to the screen? Where is this coming from? And like, he was like, oh, actually, it's a really good question. I'm yeah. not sure why I don't know this answer. And it like completely changed. And he's like, oh my gosh, that unlocks, like then obviously this is the direction that we should go because it makes sense based on where they're coming from and me thinking and opening it up. So I think that's yes. an ex example, exactly what you just said. Yes, yes. I think it's it's a matter of not being polluted with like the, the product that you're working on so much and, and having that fresh ideas. <laughs> That yes. maybe it can totally. be like they can be uh, from a junior, this from a more junior designer. Like it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have to do with seniority. I I feel <laughs> that's a really good point. I'm really glad you said that because that's so true. Like any designer's input is powerful. Like yeah. any ideas, like brainstorming ideas, comes from anyone and everyone. Like it doesn't matter that, like. I'm your manager or in your a mid to senior level. It doesn't matter. It's like ideas are ideas and they can yes. come from anywhere and a junior can come in and like hierarchy means nothing. It's just about like being able to explore and express and keeping that open dialogue. Yes. I love that. Yes, totally. totally agree. <laughs> can come from anywhere. Um, okay, so let's keep going. So um, you're, you're back at the newspaper taking on a a project kind of on your own in the digital yes. space with an art director. Yes. And then uh, Diane and Alex appear in my life. <laughs> uh, I was like, I was three months at the newspaper again. And um, I heard from a, well, from a friend of mine that works with, well, another agency. Um, but he told me, hey, in this agency, in TDP, they are looking for a designer. Um, like, would you like to hear from them? And I told yes. Like, I always, honestly, I, I, I always say yes, because I, I want to be open um, and hear. And then if, if I want to say no, then I say no. But really, uh, I had this interview, this first interview with you, and I researched a little bit of the agency, and I, it really, like, motivate me to be part of it like before entering the newspaper again for the second time I ha was having this conversation with my mom where I told her like he was she was asking me what is your next step in your career and like we were talking about this like my professional life and I told her like definitely working for a an, an abroad agency like I would love to work like 
outside of Argentina, like uh, working with other people from different uh, countries and UX related. Um, so I definitely like visualized that, I think. Like, <laughs> right? I was like, that sounds exactly yes. like when we approached you. <laughs> really, really. Um, so yeah, I really visualized it. And well, I have these interviews with you and uh, then after a couple of days, I would say it was like really quickly, uh, I entered TDP as a product designer. Um, and like my goal at TDP, I think it was at, like to learn uh, in a UX, like learned UX uh, in like, uh, because I, I was learning UX more intuitively so this was my first experience on product design. Um, so yeah, I would say my goal was like to, to um, how can I say, um, be better in the technical side. Uh, right. And also it was more my first experience in a startup, like in the startup world. Uh, and I wanted to, to try this new thing because I came up, like I came from these corporate and big companies and it was the first time that it was like a smaller agency uh, that I had really contact with the founders of the agency. So that was like a, a really motivating and interesting for me. And now I could say that it is the one of the things that I mostly value about TDP is like being able not only to learn UX and this did I didn't expect it to be honest, like when I entered but also like proposing ideas, proposing like being part of the processes, uh, being part of a lot of things that are not only re design related. Um, so yeah, that sums, yeah. It, sums up <laughs> all I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that um, like you coming into TDP with your more corporate experience and getting that startup experience and like, I think that's very much a startup mentality is like you come in and you wear a bunch of hats. Like there's smaller teams. There's so many things we're trying to do. There's like, we always just want to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, um, do more, do more, do more. And I think you kind of came in and we're like, I'm down, let's do it. Whatever you guys want, like, let's see what happens. And so I love that. I think it's very much throughout all of this, there's like this side of you that's always like, yes to opportunities, like say yes, let's see what happens, let's push for what I want. And I, I definitely think that that makes it you such a great fit for TDP and the kind of that startup world is like you move quickly and you're just open and just wanna do whatever. Um, so a question I have for you is like, what do you think are the biggest differences from coming from that more traditional world to the startup world? Um. I would say like definitely like in the startup world things happen things happen like more quickly. <laughs> uh, I think that in a corporate environment if you maybe if you propose something I won't say like they don't hear you because that would be a lie but um like things take long because there are a lot of people involved um and a lot of yeah a lot of layers you have to break and uh, in a startup world, like everyone is like so committed, I think, uh, to the growth of of the startup that that everything like you make everything happen quicker. I would say, um, like people, I, I feel that people are more energetic in a startup, and I I could see that I can see that in myself, like um, like. I, I want TDP to grow because also it will mean that I will grow. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, it, I think that, that sums, sums up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, it's like so small. It's like we're a family and it's like yeah. every success is everyone's success and it's the company's success. Yeah. Um, and it's our customer success. So we talked a lot about TDP and like internal, but like we work with startups. So a lot of these, a lot of like all of your customers is like you're, iterating and building designs really quickly and it's like our customers are like hey let's do something let's put it out there yes let's see what mm -hmm. happens let's come back so that's like very much also how you interact with 
your customers. At That's TV. true. Yeah, totally. Yes, maybe like I used to think of the of my process like, okay, I need to like I propose this, I, I need to work on this a little bit more. Like things were happening like in a in another rhythm. And now like I like I was trying to end every single detail before it came out. Like for instance, in my previous experiences, and now it's more like a construction and an iterative way. Um, so yeah, I'm learning a lot from that also. Yeah, I like how you said that. I think that's very true. Um, and I think so. One one of the last things I do want to talk about are MPS scores. So <laughs> for everyone that doesn't know what MPS scores are, it's based, I actually think I talked about this on a pre, in a previous podcast as well, but MPS scores are basically um, the a standard of getting feedback from people. So it's usually the question is like, would you recommend us to a friend? Like companies send out this questionnaire. I'm sure everyone's gotten that. And it's something we do monthly and it's how we keep track of um, our work and our customer happiness. Um, and then, so it's a, it's a metric that we use a lot at TDP and it's just a great way for us to measure. And like, since Delphia started, all of her customers have given her a 10. And for everyone to know, getting a 10 on an NPS score is like impossible. Like people don't <laughs> give 10s. It's like insane. So I think that that speaks to a lot of like your past and customer oriented and yes and friendly and just like everything that brings together all of your skills and your design skills and your ability to learn and grow and just like go with the flow, I think is what makes you such an awesome designer, um, not just your design skills, but everything else. And we can actually measure that, which is something that a lot of people are like, what's the value of UX design? Well, we are measuring that and we're seeing that our customers are getting value out of it. And in turn, we're getting value and metrics out of that too. So I don't know if you have anything else to add, but I just wanted to, <laughs> to talk a little bit about MPS scores. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I. I feel that it's great. It's another way of getting feedback, like from the customer. Uh, so that's great. And um, apart from like getting that number, that in this case is a ten, but it could be another. Uh, but it's like it's good that we have these questions that the the customer feels seen. And me as as the designer, I'm responsible. I try to enter and see what the customer has to say because maybe it's a ten, but maybe he put a comment about something. So I would say it's like, don't get satisfied with that 10. Like, uh, I don't know, always like try to, to, I don't know, to see what you could do better or, or how can you keep growing? Yes. Thank you for saying that. I feel like Alex, our co-founder is in my head. It's like numbers. <laughs> That's like, he's like tens means everything's great, but yes. Very good point. It's like, yes, the number is satisfying, but yes. also seeing how else we can continue to grow and how you can push yourself to grow with our customers is, is super, super important. So yes, yes. <laughs> thank Both you parts. for bringing me back down <laughs> no, <that's great. laughs> to the real reason is to make our customers happy. <laughs> We're very customer oriented. So, um, well, yeah, so, so Delphi kind of ending is like, What's next? Where do you see yourself in a year? Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you want your design career to go? Um, so I would say, as I was telling you, I think that I am at this point in my career that I am in a mid level um, and I am trying out like different things. Like, and TDP has helped me a lot with that. Like being at TDP, I could uh, test being like leading people. I could test being a... Uh, like in charge of a whole redesign, uh, the website redesign. So I got to wear different hats and that's been great for me to grow and learn and also to understand what is it that I want. Um, as I was telling like in, in the first minutes of this episode. Um, but I think my next step would be, I would love to like really make focus on my technical side and really, really feel confident about that. Like being able to enter Figma and uh, knowing that is my safe place. Uh, like nowadays I really enjoy it, but I feel that maybe having that amount of confidence that I don't know if I will ever have <laughs> that amount. 
that I'm looking for. But yeah, I would say that like focusing on my technical side for being that like senior designer and then eventually one day maybe like, I don't know, being a, a head of design or something. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yes, I love that. And you know, like, I don't know if anyone can become a Figma expert because Figma is constantly changing and putting out new amazing features. So I feel like there's always going to be some yes. kind of learning, which is also kind of exciting. So yes, um, yes, that's true. As, yes, as much as one can be an expert in Figma, um, I think is a, is a good goal for sure. Um, well, awesome. Delphi, thank you so much for taking the time and chatting about your background, where you came from. Um, I think we got some really good nuggets of like tips and tricks and things that you suggest for, for junior designers and designers, honestly, of all levels to like up their design game and be better and push themselves. And so, um, yes, I hope that listeners might follow in your footsteps and push themselves mm. to, to do something maybe they are scared of or that they're not confident in, but just to try it out. Um, so yes, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was great. I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> thank you, Delphi. We'll chat soon. Yes. We'll chat soon. Thank you.